So I haven't been looking forward to this project uh, that I got to do here. I need a grade crossing to go over a bunch of tracks from this area to the tower that's over here. Uh, there's no other way for vehicles to get there. I could leave it as is. It doesn't have to be exactly like reality, but in this case, when you look at it, you're going to wonder, oh, how the heck do they get all that equipment over there? How do they get vehicles and stuff? So uh, I do need some kind of credible way to get a little path here, a little road, a grade crossing over these tracks. The problem is there's five tracks, and uh, I've been avoiding it because I know I'm going to have to do some repetitive work, and it's kind of tedious. I mean, it's not the worst thing in the world, but uh, there are other things I'd rather do on the layout than this. But I want to do it because I have to. So I have to figure out how to get from here to there uh, across these tracks. And I need uh, some wood for the grade crossing. Um, so you have to determine how high the rail is and go from there. Uh, mine works out. I'm using code 83 on all the layout. So I think uh, 1 16th inch high wood is OK. It's not exactly the height of the rail but I also don't want to impede the, the cars going over it, uh, the rolling stock getting caught on anything. So I'm okay if it's a little lower than the rail. So I need to figure out what I'm going to choose as far as material um, to get across the tracks. I'm going to do wood in the center of the rails. Uh, there'll probably be wood on either side of the outside of the rails, but in between I need some material to drive over. And I could continue with wood, but I think all wood is too much, so I might do pavement in between the wood uh, grade crossings. Before we get started, please hit the subscribe button down below so you can get notified when we make a new video. Thanks. So the first thing we need to determine is the width of these uh, boards for the crossing. And I used a HO scale vehicle and just kind of came up with a number at one and a quarter inches wide. So I'm going to use my chopper tool to cut uh, more than I need. I don't want to be sure while I'm working on it, so I'll just cut a lot of extra. And all the wood is going to be stained with an alcohol and ink wash, which is just a pint of alcohol with uh, one teaspoon of uh, drafting ink or black India ink. And just mix it in a cup and then take them out and let them dry. You can use a paper towel to help it dry faster. And once you get the wood out of the cup, if you can save the alcohol and ink, just pour it back into your bottle. So I have to decide now where it's going to lay uh, regarding the tracks. Uh, I want to land here, I think, not in front of the building. So if I get a vehicle, I can have some room to park and do a turn. And then I have to decide what angle works best. Um, I could do 90 degrees off of this concrete slab here, or I could do it's kind of an angle, uh, and then that'll give me 90 degrees off of this structure here, which probably makes more sense. Um, I think this is too, just too abrupt, and I just don't like it. Uh, so I'm going to go with that. But to make things easier on myself, I'm going to put some tape down to the left of the crossing, so I have a bit of a guide. Now I know I can go here, 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 and they'll all line up. So I was going back and forth uh, which uh, glue to use. Uh, first I was going to use white uh, Aliens Tacky Glue, but then I decided to try the wood glue. And I think the wood glue will be a little stronger and dry a little faster. I'm just giving myself a guide as to how far I need to add the glue to the ties below. And making sure my ties are clean of any ballast. So you can see because of this angle, I'm getting this stepping with each crossing, which is what I want. And it's probably a little bit more interesting than if I went straight 90 degrees across and they all lined up. Uh, you can get laser cut versions of grade crossings, um, which a lot of them, some of them do look very good, but I think if you do the individual boards, you get better, they just don't look as flat. So 
So I'm being pretty generous with the amount of space between the rail and the wood. Um, and I just, I don't want to have any trouble with derailments or couplers getting caught. So it will be a little lower than the rail, as I mentioned earlier, but I think it's uh, worth it to avoid any headaches later with operation. So now we have to add the wood to the outside of the rail. Uh, and that poses a bit of a problem because the plastic tie plates and spike on the track are going to lift up our board a little higher than uh, we'd like. I don't know if you can see it there, but uh, it's going to push it that much higher than the rail. So we need to either remove the spikes and the plates, uh, which I'd rather not do because they are holding the rail down. Um, I guess I could put CA glue there ahead of time and then slice them off, but uh, it's easy enough just to take a, an X-Acto blade and just chamfer the edge of the wood uh, and then just let it rest on top of the spikes uh, below. So that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to cut a bunch of these to fit and then we'll glue them in place. I'm sure there is an easier way to do this, but this is pretty quick. And that's it, I'm kind of done. So I don't need this tape anymore. I need to take that away. While we're doing this, we can think about what's gonna happen here. And I think I might introduce another section of concrete. And then from in between the tracks, use asphalt. Again, just to make some variety. So I'm putting glue against the side of the rail and on top of the ties uh, to get a good join. Some ballast does get in the way, but just use a toothpick to clear it away. So I need to get rid of some of this grass. Uh, I can rip some of it up, but I think it's gonna stick up through whatever I use as a pavement material here. So the best way to get rid of it is with a razor. So I think this needs to be concrete from here to here. Uh, but of course, where does it start? Uh, how far does it go? I could do a path, the width of this straight here, and then it leaves this little uh, empty space or nook, but that doesn't make sense. So I think I'm gonna do 90 degrees this way, and then an angle that way. Uh, that would make more sense. We need to get rid of a little bit of this ballast to put in some formwork. I'm going to do that very easily with this chisel. Now I can already see that, and you might not be able to see in the camera, but this is the right height here, but not here. So I'm going to have to shave this down a bit. So I've decided to use a little glue here anyway. Uh, I'm just using a couple of drops of Loctite to kind of spot weld it in place. I'll be able to break it away later after the plaster is dry, but this will just hold it in place a little bit. So I've mixed this plaster, um, kind of thick. It's more peanut butter than pancake batter. I just want a little more control over it. I don't want it going all over the place. 
Let's start with that. Bigger knife would have helped, that's for sure. Hold on. So I really don't want this grass to be a problem when I <clears throat> start applying the pavement material. So I think I just need to scrape it away even more aggressively than uh, with the razor. All right, so we're, we're getting there. We're almost across uh, these tracks. We just need to pave these sections here. And I'm not quite sure how I'm going to do it, but I am using um, this, uh, this is uh, Vallejo Earth Texture Acrylic. It's basically uh, asphalt. Yep, right there. So it's a pre-mixed paving material that's already black and it's got some texture. But I'm not sure how I'm going to do the edges here without any form work. So I had one idea for just holding something in place like this. That's not gonna work. Let's see. So this is task board. It's a mat board material. It's about a sixteenth of an inch thick. Uh, this is what we use in our kits to do the sidewalks and foundation slabs. So I'm gonna see if I can cut it to fit first and then we'll figure out how to either apply that to it or just paint it. So that fits nicely, but how do we color it? Hmm, good question. What I don't like about it for asphalt is that the sides are too uh, sharp the edges too too much of a 90 degree asphalt is kind of curved off um, so maybe i could color it black paint it black and then use this stuff on top of it the um the vallejo pavement material um, that might work i think i might try that let's try that so i've taken my task board piece and i've colored it with a black sharpie marker i think this is i think it's going to work so i figure out how this went goes like that i think so I'll glue this down with some wood glue. So I'm already happy with the edge here. Let me get closer. Now this stuff dries um, kind of as shiny as it looks right now, uh, almost as shiny anyway. So we will have to weather it a bit to kill that shine. So the pavement's dry. Um, pretty happy with how it turned out. I know I was dreading doing this. Um, it wasn't that big a deal after all, uh, but I really like how it does connect these two sides of the yard. Um, this tower was kind of an island unto itself. 
and now it's all connected and it makes more sense. Uh, and doing infrastructure like this kind of opens up new opportunities. There's some spaces here that can use some detailing. I can put a shed here, more trash there. Of course, we can have a figure walking across the crossing, but it does need some weathering, um, which we're gonna do in a part two video. Uh, that needs some, some more details, scenery. Uh, we're gonna kill this shine here, like I said, and uh, we're looking forward to that. Uh, and I wanna thank everyone on Patreon here. Uh, our list grew a little bit, so thank you very much. Uh, if you're interested in checking that out, we've got more content there that we don't put in other places, videos, photos, uh, kit releases, and information like that. So check that out, and uh, we'll see you next time. Thank you.